This is Build Your Difference, a podcast created by Blue Artists, a brand platform with one goal, to help great visionaries like you build impressive brands. Every month, we'll bring you insightful tips, knowledge, and compelling stories from successful entrepreneurs and the Blue Artists team on how to create and market a winning brand that does more than just launch a new product or service. It starts an ongoing conversation because you're not just making a brand, you're making a difference. Let's start building. Um, okay, so, you know, but listen, we, we have learned, um, we have learned some lessons uh, in terms of, in terms of like how Brandesk works over the, since we launched on May 1st, so May, June, July, whenever this airs, uh, we have learned some very important lessons. And and uh, I, I want to share with you just a few of the lessons that I think were really, really kind of potent that we had to kind of learn real quick and then implement into the system. <laughs> um, and one lesson really specifically um, was, you know, when Brandesk launched, we had uh, on every project and every request, there was one sort of chat conversation thread. And this is similar to like, you know, if you, if like, and, you know, you and I like to bounce back and forth with using Fiber and Upwork as sort of competitor examples. And on those platforms, when you are involved in a project, there is one conversation thread. So you basically have the ability to privately message the person, or you can communicate with them in a sort of a, a, a message thread that anyone who you bring into the project can participate in, right? Yep. Okay. So we we launched with that. Okay. That's how we launched on Brandesk. But what we learned was that because Brandesk has a different structure fundamentally, because we have clients who are working with producers, and then those producers are also working with team members, we started to realize that, and I know this sounds so obvious, we started to realize that the, the nature of the conversation that the producer would be having with the client was fundamentally different than the way the, the producer would be exploring strategies and concepts with the team. Mm -hmm. And we, we needed to sort of split those conversations into their own private threads so that when it's time for the producer to, to talk with the client, it's in a structured environment where the producer doesn't have to worry about the artist interjecting or accidentally delivering a, a draft or deliverable too early or too soon. Like it's it's a it's an environment where it's just the producer, just the client, and the producer can manage that entire experience. Um, and then a different environment for where the producer can then manage the experience for the team members, letting them know here's the client's feedback. Let's talk about this. Let's dissect this. You know, different team members are all pitching in ideas and concepts and you know, everybody's sort of collaborating, but but that kind of ideation process, that kind of collaborative process, the client doesn't really need to be a part of. The client is just waiting for the deliverable. Just just give me the deliverable when it's done so I can tell you my <laughs> feedback, you know? And and I gotta tell you, that was an oversight on on my end. I mean, I got I take responsibility for that. When we launched, I, I did not realize that 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 was going that we needed to split those up. I didn't realize that that was going to be an issue. I learned the hard way. I saw clients getting confused. I saw I saw you know artists jumping into the chat and and submitting drafts well before they had actually been um, totally vetted by the producer. Um, I saw um, clients you know complaining that they didn't want to get notifications every single time somebody was chatting in the in the conversation thread about an idea they had the, the you know ultimately i learned from clients that you know we really just want to be updated when it's time for us to jump in and give feedback and it seems so obvious to me but i didn't you know that was an oversight and so it's, we it's fixed a, it's, it. it's a it's a learning it's a learning for everybody, everybody. yeah yeah exa you know thank you it is and um you know I guess I, I try to choose my messaging <laughs> well, so, you know, but I, I also feel like, you know, I mean, I'll be honest with you, it, it absolutely was a learning curve for me. It, you know, it, it, it you know, when, especially like when a lot of what we've been sort of using as our frame of reference 
are other platforms that that literally they don't have to worry about this because that's they're not taking that extra step, that extra level of of um, of uh, structure when it comes to the experience that the that their users, you know, it, they're kind of like, look, here's here's the conversation thread, do what you will with it. Whereas that doesn't really work for brand desk, and and we learned that you know the hard way. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, what, I've been on there a couple of times, of course. And of course. And for, um, reading, and correct me if I'm wrong. I remember reading something about the way the conversation should work between producer artist, you know, the producer client, um, that the artist should con confer with the producer first before sending work off, drafts off to the client, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so kind of going on that, you know, we would, speaking with the producer, we would agree, okay, let's get this project. The project will, I'll have a draft done by, I don't know, Monday, right? Mm -hmm. And then send it to producer first, just give a quick check on it, and then off to the client. So now I'm used to, of course, like we mentioned the whole Fiverr Upwork thing, obviously used to wearing all those hats of being your own kind of producer, artist, yeah. everything. And yeah. so there's no one else to go through. So when Monday comes around, Monday 8 a.m., I'm, sub I'm submitting it and it goes straight to the client. And so now I'm submitting it, but I'm submitting it first to the producer. And then I realized, well, um, technically I sent it in on time. Yeah. But if for some reason the producer is, you know, who knows what happens in their lives, you know, they go AWOL for a day or two. Well, now the client won't get that work until... Wednesday, Thursday, or something. So what, whenever the producer yeah. hands it over. So client. technically, it's late, but it's kind of not, you know. And then are you going to get a, a disgruntled client because we told them it was going to be their Monday? And so I had a I'm trying to remember which case it was. I can't quite think of the details off the top of my head, but I got something in on time based on what I had told the producer, but I did not see any follow up with the work going to the client and I'm like, Oh crap, you know, the client's going to be where, well, where's the work you said Monday. So, and I don't, you know, I'm not wanting to overstep my role there, yeah. but my first instinct is to keep the client happy, mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, and I, all along I'm kind of keeping in touch with the producer as much as I can. And I just send off the work and that's a good lesson of now we're adding two, three, four persons to the mix of all this that I need to remember to give myself, you know, two or three days out from my normal, you know, so if I tell the producer Monday, I probably want to be having this thing finished by Friday. So the producer has the weekend, you know, to do whatever they've sure. got to do. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Okay. So it's little things like that. Um, yeah, that's a, that is a good point. And that, yeah, that's a part of the learning curve. That is a, that is a good point. Point. Um, I think, you know, in splitting the conversation threads, what, what we've done is we've we've also sort of we've also sort of tried to make sure that the the expectations of the artist are specifically between the producer and the artist. And so, for example, like in the old way, where, where the conversations were all merged, um, yeah, you, like if 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 the if the date to get this thing in was like let's say Monday, it's up to the artist to get it in on Monday, you know, get, because it's time stamped when when the when the deliverable is uploaded to the chat, it's time stamped. Everybody can see it was delivered at this time. Done. Um, but in this new way now, like okay, maybe the producer and the artist have an expectation that that hey, you know, the producer says to the artist, hey, I need this in by Monday. The artist goes, okay, let me get this in on Monday. But maybe the producer did not provide that same expectation to the client. Maybe to the client, they say, hey, we'll, we'll look at getting this to you Tuesday or Wednesday. Ah. So that, yeah, so that the nope. client is like, okay. So the producer's like, okay, I need a little time to make sure I received it, reviewed it before I send it off to the client. But the artist isn't really a part of that conversation. So like you were saying, you don't really know did the what kind of conversations the producer having <laughs> with yeah, the client. Yeah. I don't or really in know. One, in one case, I was having almost a daily back and forth with producer mm -hmm. and then getting on with the work. Work's finished, or at least draft one's finished. Um, and 
submit it to the producer, but after a week of constant back and forth, now suddenly I'm not getting the immediate responses back from the producer. And of course, you know, you, you know they're going to have like five, six, ten projects going at once, let's say. Sure, you know? yeah. Um, and something you said a second ago made me... Re- it, I think it was when you're talking about how, you know, the producer and the artist might decide on each with each other that, okay, you're going to submit this on Monday, but the producer and the client might, the producer might express to the client a different deadline date. But I noted what I noticed was happening. This is probably before some of these changes you meant, went into effect yeah. was producer. And I would confer, I would say, I can have this done for you by Monday. And I would see in the, um, in the main chat where the client could see the chat as well, that the producer would relay the same message that I had. So the producer was telling the client, he'll have it ready. He'll have it ready on Monday. Yeah. So now I've got to have it ready on Monday. (laughs) And after, after a week of like the producer and me back and forth, instantly like boom, boom, boom. Suddenly I I submit the work for it to be there on Monday. And now I'm not hearing anything with the producer because they're probably tied up with some work over here, over there. And that's in, what I'm the, in the conversation thread. Did you see any other conversation happening once your work was submitted? I don't recall that. You know, beyond the um, you know, the client saying, "Okay, oh, okay, this is great, thanks." You know, that kind of yeah. Um, okay. And then there might be a comment from the producer saying, "You know, you know, you know, there needs to be." Let us know your give us your, let us have let us know your feedback or yeah what yeah. Have you. Um, but then basically once the client has has com- communicated that they are um, give thumbs up to the work you know kind of that's kind of where it ends so yeah yeah um, you know yeah it, it it's just that that whole process of everybody being able to see that mm-hmm. one conversation thread it just ended up making things really more confusing than they needed to be and that's because. It's like, okay, you know, you've got you've got a bunch of cooks in the kitchen, right? But there are no clear lanes. So it's like, okay, what, you know, it's like a traffic jam or something. Yeah. And and so, yeah, with these improvements where we split up that conversation thread, you'll probably notice this, like, you the, the, you'll, you may have noticed it on, on probably the, your more recent projects, mm-hmm. but um, you'll definitely notice it for sure moving forward. Like, you'll notice that when, when you go in, to, to, to chat in the conversation thread of a particular project or a particular request, that is labeled team conversation. So it's the only thing you can see as an artist is the team conversation. You cannot see what the client is saying. You have no idea. And, and this is good because it allows you to only worry about your relationship with the producer. That's it. The only thing that matters to you is your relationship with that producer. And if the, if the producer needs something in on a certain time, you're giving it to that producer at the time that they've requested it, but you don't have to worry about how that's being handled on the client side. Right. And, and uh, you know, and it's great because it, it keeps you more focused. It allows you to not have to, you know, worry, oh my God, is, what is the producer saying? You don't have to worry about any of that. Um, but it's also nice because God forbid, you know, the client, you know, have have, you know, very strong feedback or has a sort of impulsive reaction, which does happen every now and again. Um, you don't have to see any of that. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't have to be exposed to some of these tantrums, that, you know, some people want to have, you uh, know, poor, you poor just, producers. <laughs> yeah, you, you can just rely on the producer to come back and say, OK, well, you know, uh, <laughs> Put it this way: the client wants to see it a little shorter, <laughs> you know, or, or whatever, whatever the, whatever they, the feedback is, you know. They can give you the the G-rated version of the note. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I think that is that get, is yeah. You know? I think that is a good idea though, because there can be um, a back and forth between producer and artist that will make total sense to the two of them. Mm-hmm. That if the client were privy to, it would just confuse the bejesus out of them. You know, and when they get confused, that's when concerns start to pop up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and, and you know what? Yeah. And, and I, I'm telling you, me personally, mm. I, I saw that play out in a few situations and it was, it was just an unforgettable moment for me because I had no, I just did not anticipate that kind of thing. And in some ways, I think I may have had a little bit of a, 
overly optimistic <laughs> thinking of how like everybody would just come together in the chat and just be honky dork, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but no, no, you you gotta have different communication streams yeah. because you know the whole point. The whole point of all this is to create efficiency, and you know it should be efficient for you as an artist to just get the details from your producer, do what you gotta do, turn into the producer and move on to the next thing and not have to worry about the, the client communication, all any of that. And, and, you know, and so this split, I mean, my goodness, it's, it's such a simple design shift, but it is, it's really, it's really impactful. Oh, it makes um, total sense. Yeah. Uh, to the extent that you're going to have artists, producers and what have you coming from other platforms where, as I've mentioned before, we've all been tasked with having to hold on to all the different, you know, ropes of producer hat to accounting hat to artist hat. It's hard to let those go. You know. Thanks for listening to this episode of Build Your Difference. If you'd like to learn more about how Blue Artists can help you develop a distinguished brand that inspires and engages a growing audience, then please visit us at www blue-artist.com and be sure and subscribe to our monthly podcast for the latest tips and trends in brand development and marketing. And remember, you're not just making a brand, you're making a difference. Start building yours today 